So let's solve for exercise 4. What we can see here is a frequency table for two of the variables from our student survey, the lying variable and the religion variable. So we can see the religion variable here, we'll call it R, and the lying variable across the columns. The religion variable, of course, indicates whether you, you may remember, find comfort in religion, no or yes. I deleted all blanks and no answers. The lying variable was to be answered. The question was, is lying justified? And the questions range from 1 to 10. So let's briefly check what 1 and what 10 meant in our legend worksheet lying. 10 said it would always be justified and one that it's never. So let's just indicate that here. 1 was never and 10 was always. Now you can see that in this table there are actually a few numbers missing. Here's a number missing, here's a number missing, here's a number missing and this one's missing and you're supposed to complete that. Of course to do that we need to understand how this table is structured. It's structured such that the marginal frequencies here, that 71 for instance, is the sum of these two numbers. So therefore if we're missing these numbers we know that this number and this number have to add up to 59 so what's missing is 30. Here the missing number 19 have to add up to 48, so that is a 29. This number, these two will add up to this missing number 18. And then this one here, that's the total number of observations, that's going to be equal to either that sum in the grand total row or the grand total column. Now which one would I rather add? This one, that's shorter, 6, 2, so 626 observations we have altogether. So in the second part of the question we are asked to regroup the variable, especially the line variable. We have 10 categories and we are to form three new categories. One, two, three. We shall call this, actually that's a mistake, that should be no. I hope I'll adjust that in the file you can see. Uh, 8 to 10, that's going to be relabeled to a yes, and 4 to 7 to sometimes. Okay, that means 8 to 10, these are the responses which tend towards the um, always justified line, is always justified category. So, how do we do that? We basically replicate a table again, just for fewer t categories. I'll do that here on the right and lying will have a no, sometimes, and yes. And then we will also have a total and a total here. Is we know the marginal values will stay the same. We still have 626 six and 347, 279, and this one we don't know yet because we're going to collapse the 10 into the free group. So let's think about that first one. No lying and no religion. Religion now. No lying that corresponds to 1, 2 and 3. Okay, so here are our boundaries. So basically we need to add up all these numbers. So what do we get here? 15, 90, 105, 108. And next we can add up all these numbers. And what we get is the next number. And I will just complete the table. So once we've calculated all these frequencies for the new joint categories, now we have six categories, we can calculate the new marginal values for the line variable 108 plus 97 is 205 these two add together to 327 
and this one here is 94. Now of course all these will again sum up to 6 to 6. Every respondent has found a new home in our new table. So we are supposed to calculate a few probabilities. To do this, what we first, what will be easiest is to first translate this frequency table into a joint probability table. So let me do this here. So we again need the structure of the table. So now we can calculate the joint probability table. So the joint probability of religion no lying no is 108 divided by 626. And that will be 0.173. Um, let's calculate the next one. Uh, lying no religion yes, 97 divided by 626. That is going to be 0 0.1. Five, five. Let me round to three digits here. I'm a bit space constrained. Now this will sum up. So what we need is two or five to six to six. That will be 0 0.327. So you can already see there's some rounding issue here. Um, you know, if you add this up. Uh, this up together you'll get 328. Okay, and rounding issues are unfortunately unavoidable. So you can complete this table. We know of course here we will have a 1. And you can complete this table. I'll just be quiet. Okay, so once we've got that we can now calculate our probabilities here. Let me start with probability that R is equal to no, so that's a marginal probability R equal to no. This is this one here. 0 0.554. So next we want probability that L is sometimes L is sometimes so L sometimes marginal probability 0.522. So then the probability that L is not yes. So what does that mean? On well, the probability that L is not yes, that means these two categories. So we need to add up, since they are mutually exclusive, these two categories, we can add up the probabilities. That's the same as the probability for no plus the probability for sometimes, and we get 0.849. What is missing at here? The probability for L equals yes conditional on R equals no. So this for this we will of course use Bayes rule. Okay. We need the jo a joint probability probability for L equals yes and R equals no divided by the marginal probability that i is equal to no. So what do we get? L yes r no. L yes r no. 0 0.086 so that was this one here divided by the marginal probability for r equal no. That's this one. 0 0.554 0 0.554 And here's our result. Then next one we have a joint probability i is equal to yes and l is equal to sometimes. That's quite straightforward. R yes l sometimes 0.227 
227 and now but conditional on independence or assuming independence So what we need here is basically the product of the two marginal probabilities. So that's the same as but of course you know this is only valid if we have independence. And these two probabilities are probability that r is equal to yes marginal this one 0.446 times marginal probability for sometimes 0.522 and what we get is 0.232. Okay, so that's question one. Second question refers to some results from question one. Well, basically, what we need here to answer is a probability tree. We refer to the religion variable, and we are drawing three students, and we are asking them whether they get comfort from religion, and we'll form a new random variable called n, which represents the number of students out of these three students that get comfort from religion. So n will have the following possible outcomes. We can either have not one, two, or three students that get possible comfort. So, and the question asks us to calculate a probability distribution for this random variable n. So, the final outcome of what we do will certainly have to be something that looks like this when n the outcomes are 0, 1, 2, 3 and we want a probability and if we sum, so we need four values here and once we sum all these up we should get a 1. Okay, so that's all we need. We need to complete this table. So, I said one way to solve this, the one we taught you, is a probability tree. So let me first sketch all the possible outcomes. I'll try to do that as tight as possible, see whether I can do it staying on that, on that graph now. I think I'll need a bit more space. So before we continue doing that, we need to figure out what's the relevant probability. So we certainly need to know what are the probabilities that r is equal to yes and the probabilities that r is equal to no. Okay, everything is going to be based around these two and we'll just check up here what we had. r no was 0.554. and this one here was 446. So this is everything's going to be built around these probabilities. So let me now draw the tree. We have to think of three students. Okay, so student 1, student 2 and student the first student can be one of two outcomes. The first student can be one of two outcomes. Then the second student, again, depending on which outcome we have for the first student, we can have these outcomes, so let's put labels to this. So let's say this is outcome uh, yes, 
and this is outcome no. So then to get to this case, so there are different cases. So once if the first one is yes, the second one can again be yes or no. If the set first one says no, no comfort rem from religion, the second student can say yes or no. And then we have for each of these four outcomes again a branching off of the third student. So we can have a yes or no, a yes or no, So this is our branch. Now we've got to fill this with probabilities so we can calculate the probabilities of these eight different outcomes in the end. Let me, as I did in the lecture, label these as A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. We have basically only two probabilities and what I shall do is I shall color code them. Okay, we have a red probability, that's the probability that the student answers no comfort from religion. And now every branch that leads to an N I shall now label with or I shall draw redraw in red. Okay, all these branches. Here we have the probabilities that the student answers no and the, let's make this a, the blue probability that the student answers yes. These are all the blue branches. So let's pick out the first probability here. That's the probability that we have yes, yes, yes as a response if we assume that these draws, and now this is quite important, are independent, we will just calculate probability for yes times the probability for yes times the probability for yes. So it will be, so the probability that we have outcome A is 0.446 times 0.446 times 0.446 when you calculate this what you'll get is 0.086 let me pick out one more probability this one here probability E here we have probability of no times probability of yes times probability of yes so we have 0.554 times 0.446 and the solution is this. Now it turns out that there isn't much more we need to calculate because the probability for all cases where we have two yeses and one no, as in this case, will always be the same, will always be 0.110. So let's see where we have that case. Two yeses, one no, one, one, and one no. So here this probability will be 0.110 as well. We also have yes, no, yes. This is another 0.110. And this is, so we have three cases where we have two yeses, one noes. So what about this case? Here we have one yes, two noes. This will be the probability of D. It's going to be 0.446 times. And this equals 
0.137, almost 14%. And again, we can just use the same probability for all cases where we have one yes and two no's. One, two, no's, one yes. So here as well, 1.137. In fact, this one as well, as well, outcome F. No, yes, no. And the last outcome, outcome H, we have three no's and if you calculate this probability, I'll leave that up to you, you should get 0.170, that's three times 0.554. So we have all our eight outcomes. Now recall we need to fill this table here. Okay, So we need to label our outcomes. Let me just use a different color here. Okay, so we want to find these outcomes. So zero yeses. Where is that? That is only down here. This is only outcome H. Okay, so that is zero yeses. That's the only case how we could get that and the probability is 0.170. So that's fine. Now one yes. Which outcome has one yes? One yes, as in the um, detailed calculation, that was this case, E. So here we have one. And where else did we? Uh, sorry, um, that was wrong. In fact, here we had two yeses. So one yes we had here. That was the blue one. One yes. Where else did we have one yes? Here and here. Okay. So we have D, F, and G. The case of one yes. These are mutually exclusive events, we can't have at the same time combination D and combination F, so we can just add up the three probabilities, 0.137 times 3, and we get 0.411. So then we can do the same with the possible outcomes which yield 2 yeses, we already had 1 here, and these two outcomes also yield two yeses. Again, we can add up all these probabilities. That's three times 0.110. That's easy. 0.330. And the last outcome is this guy here. Uh, here we had three yeses, and we have 0.086. Okay. So if you add all of these up together we don't get exactly one and that is due to rounding errors. Okay, we get 0.997 if I see that right. Uh, again, the rounding error devil has um, struck. So that was question two. This is, oh, for I complete that, so this is now the probability distribution for our new random variable n which was equivalent to the number of students that get comfort from religion out of three randomly drawn students. So next we'll talk about continuous random var variables. We'll start with just calculating a few probabilities for a normal distribution. Recall a normal distribution we could sketch looking something like this. It will go, if it's a standard normal distribution, so standard normal, that means Z is distributed with mean 0 and variance 1, that means this value will be 0, and we can go to negative infinity and plus infinity. Although this value will converge to zero but never be exactly equal to zero. In this probabilities, this is a density function and probabilities are represented by areas underneath this density function. The entire area will be equal to one. So let's start with the first probability. Okay, so the probability that P the probability that Z is exactly equal to zero, so that we exactly end up here. Now, it is not 
so this is the density so it is not equal to this value because we know probabilities are areas underneath the curve and if you think about if you have an extremely thin line here what would be the area underneath that line it would be zero but it's better possibly to just know that the probability of an exact outcome in a continuous distribution is zero so that was easy what about part b the probability that z is larger than 1.25 so let's say this is 1.25 so we'll just sketch it we want the probability that z is larger so that is equivalent to the size of this arrow so how can we find out how big that is for this we need the standard normal table so here's the table we want the area to the right of 1.25 so what we need to do is we need to identify 1.25 so 1.2 is here and 5 is the 6th column because we're starting with 0 so we need to see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 we get a value of 0 0.8944 that's associated with 1.25 0 0.8944 now 0 0.8944 8944 is the size of this area, of the white area. Therefore, what's the size of this area? It's going to be 1 minus 0 0.8944, and therefore it's going to be equal to 0 0.1056. So, therefore, this is the probability. Now, let me sketch for the next question. Let's sketch the distribution again. That wasn't quite as nice. That is zero here, so now let's use red. We want the probability that z is smaller than 0 0.5. So 0 0.5. What we are after is this area. So, again, how do we get that? That's an area to the left of a certain point, so that's almost easier to get from the standard normal table we need to find that value 0 0.5 is that here 0 0.5 it's 0 0.5 exactly so we use the zero from the first column the value is 0 0.6915 so this area the size is 0 0.6915 and this is already the answer So now, what we are after, and I'll use the color red again for D, is probability of Z being between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. So 0 0.2, let's see how we're doing this, 0 0.2 is here, 0 0.2, So let me just show you the area of this. So basically what we are after is now just the area that is in between here. Okay, Only this area here is what we are after. The probability between that set is between 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. So how do we calculate that? We calculate that as the probability that z is smaller than 0 0.5, that's the red probability we already have, minus the probability that z is smaller than 0 0.2. Of course, that is that sort of um, latticed black area. So that probability we already have, that was 0 0.6915. The plaque probability we don't have yet. We have to find that from the table. We need 0 0.2. That's what we have here, 0 0.2, and then the zero column, the first column, 0 0.5793. 0 0.5793. And so what do we get? 
0.6915 minus 0.5793, we get 11.22%. And the result is 0.1122. And that is the size of this area here. Okay, 0.1122. So that was all there is. So, last questions to solve here. Again, referring to a standard normal random variable. So, the same random variable we had. Let me sketch it again. It's, when you solve questions, it's always good to sketch these things. Now the question is slightly different. For which value of z is the following true? So let's look at the, the first question A. Probability of our random variable z being smaller than this particular value, little z, is equal to 0.951. So we want so here we have zero. So we want some, we have a probability smaller than something. So we have, let me just draw a random value here. And we want that the probability that set is smaller than that value, which is represented by this area. We want this probability to be equal to 0.0951. And we are asking which value of set gives us exactly that probability. So we, how do we do this? We will now have to use the table in a backwards way. We know that in the center of the table, what we can see is exactly these sorts of probabilities. So let's try and find 0.0951, 0 0.10. So we need to go here we go, 0 0.0951. And that's related to negative 1.3. It's the second column, that's a one. So it's negative 1.31. So I can rub this out. And we get negative 1.31. Okay? So that is the solution. So we'll just have to use the table backwards. But just to practice, we'll do the following. We'll ask what's the probability of we have probability of set larger than a certain value is 0 0.025. So larger we are looking at an area to the right. So I'll we'll just draw that here. So we are looking at an area here and we want this area to be two and a half percent. So what does that mean? In a table we can't find these right tail areas, we can only find left tail areas. So what's the corresponding left tail area? That would be this area. I will just put a little blue frame around it. That area would be 0 0.975. So this is the value we need to find from the table. And we know whatever value we find for that, that value will cut off 2.5%. So 0.975. So what we need from the table, we need to go fairly far down on the table, 9797 9, here, 0.975. So that's in 1.96. So this value is 1.96. Probability that the standard normally distributed random variable is larger than 1.96 is 2.5%. So here set is 1.96 and that's the solution to the tutorial.